All right. We are starting off with white commons and uncommons. Typically, white is exist in formats to make other colors look good. <laughs> they are the anchors. You look at the white cards like, oh, this is this is you compare cards to white cards and you realize that every other color's cards are better. So maybe in this set, white will be better. We'll see. Ageless Guardian, two mana, one four. No text. Okay. I like this card. I like this card. Filler. I suspect it's filler, but I like it. I like it. Typically, I, I, I enjoy my, my defensive white cards. It's like a defensive white two drop that allows you to get to later turns and hopefully you have like white on commons and rares, which are really, if you're playing white, you're playing white for uncommons and rares but typically white uncommons and rares are actually better than every other colors the problem is of course white commons in most sets are just not very good uh i'm actually i'm gonna call this a four i'm gonna call this a four i'm willing to i'm willing to make it a three it's probably closer to three than four all right i'm gonna make it a three it's not unplayable it's not unplayable I'm going to give it a shot. Tire creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains hexproof until the turn. Yuck. I'm really not a fan of combat pumps in general in sealed. Uh, I think it's typically better just to have... A, you generally have access to just playing another creature instead. Uh, combat pumps give you the option, your opponent, to destroy your creature in response with their one of their own instants. So if you try to send your 3-3 three, three into their 4-4... Four, four, and you cast Beam of Defiance, they can respond with an ability to destroy your 3-3, and you're just, you're out two cards to your opponent's one, right? So that that's typically why I don't want anything to do with combat tricks in Sealed. And the Hexproof aspect of this is Snakeskin Veil was in the previous format, and this one. I know, we'll get to that later, and it's, it's a Mystical Archive card. I don't like Snakeskin Veil. I don't think it's very good. And that was in a form, but it was also in a format that had a lot of one-mana interactive cards because of Fortel. So it remains to be seen whether the removal spells in this format cost four and five mana. Because if they do, Beaming Defiance is good. Because you're spending two mana to counter your opponent's four. The problem with Snakeskin Veil and Hexproof cards in previous formats is you're paying one to counter your opponent's one mana card. And not even counter it because they still get a plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one counter, right? Or they still get indestructible plus one until the turn or what have you. So I don't like these types of cards. I think they're the very definition of filler. Uh, I'm going to put this as a three. All right, Combat Professor. Four cost, two, three, flyer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target you control gets plus one, O oh, and gains vigilance. Wow, we. This card is good. This card's great. This is unexpected. So in the past, what was it? Was it Armored Valkyrie in the past? Uh, what was it called? Armored Griffin in the past. It was called Armored Griffin. Four cost, two, three, Flying Vigilance. This card was good in the past. This card was good. And this card is strictly better. Yeah, and it can target itself. So, like, it kind of fakes itself at being a... It's not a 3-3 three, three on your opponent's turn. But on your turn, it's a. It, it's like... Not only does it have quasi-haste that you can play at turn four on your first main phase and then give it to your three drop and attack, right? But you can also just target itself for the rest of the game and have a three, three flying vigilance for four. This card is phenomenal. Why is this card not green black? Good, good inside joke. I like it. I like this card. This card looks really good. This is a really good common. I, yeah, I have no complaints. It's even easy to cast. I would have expected this card to be a two white, white card. Maybe maybe it's closer to a seven. This card is is this card worse than like a j destroy target creature five mana destroy target creature? I feel like it's better. I think this is probably better. Yeah, I, it's an eight. I'll give it an eight. Wow, that's surprising. I can't believe white got a good common. We haven't even started with other commons yet. Goodness. All right. 
Puzzle, just choose one. Creatures you control got plus one to on until the turn and destroy a target creature with power four or greater. <sighs> so it begins. So what was the name of the card? Was it Smite the Monstrous? It was Smite the Monstrous. I was correct. So Smite the Monstrous in the past was three and a white, destroy a target creature with power four or greater. Now wait, 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 wait. Can you target your opponents? Oh, it's the target creature you control. Shucks. Uh, okay. And so Smite the Monstrous was like a 3 out of 10 in other formats. Like, actually, Smite the Monstrous is much more of a 2 out of 10 in other formats. It was a really good sideboard card. But you you would not main deck it. Um, I would say this is a 3. I don't think you main deck this card. I've... I mean, it's a filler card. You you can main deck it. It's not embarrassing. You're not embarrassed to main deck this card. The the backup plan of giving your creatures plus plus one might come up if your opponent has any creature, and that that is a big part of this. this. Is unlikely to ever be completely dead. Like Smite the Monstrous. The big problem with Smite the Monstrous is it was very often dead. Defend the campus. It's unlikely to be completely dead. So it's not a two. It's at least a three. It is a filler card. It can go into your deck as you're one of your last three slots of your deck. But don't feel like you need to play it as it says destroy target creature and it's a white card. Don't don't worry. You don't need to worry about that. All right. Eager first year. Whenever you cast an uh, cat. Okay, so this is our first inter inter uh, interaction of Magecraft. So this is what what what's going to replace prowess. Hopefully. Now and into the future. Prowess worked on any non-creature. This works on only as instant sorcery, but it also works on copies. So it's a trade-off, but in general, it's going to be worse than Prowess. Um, but yeah, whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, plus one O. Yuck. I generally do not play Grizzly Bears. Grizzly Bears is one on a green, two, two, no text. I generally don't play those cards in limited. So... I would say this is a filler card. So, but this is a three. Uh, I'm willing to say it, it may be me closer to a four. We'll put it as a four, actually. Because it is a two drop. It is a two drop. And sometimes your seal deck just needs, like, cards that cost two. So we'll, we'll put it as a four. We'll put it as a four. Strict filler. Exile target tapped creature. Oh boy. This is going to be a controversial card, I'm sure, for many of you. Um, but I pro... In my evaluation, there was a card in the previous format called Iron Verdict. Which had a foretell and deals fire image target tapped creature. This card is bad. All right. This card is bad. And I, Iron Verdict, I think, is a lot, 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 lot better than Expel. And Iron Verdict was like a 4 out of 10. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a trap card. And I call it a trap card because it makes you think it's good. And it's actually not. The reality of the situation is when it comes to sealed and limited for the color white, is you are forced to be aggro because white does not have ine inevitability. Inevitability means that the longer the game goes on, you are more likely to win. White doesn't, almost never has that ability, inevitability in any sealed format. Their cards do not generally have very powerful effects that just can wipe out the game on their own. And so the longer the game goes on, your opponent is going to have cards in their colors that are better than yours, and you're going to lose. So if your opponent's creatures are tapped, you are losing, and this will not save you. If you're aggro, your opponent's creatures are going to be blocking. They're not going to be tapped, and this will not help you. So it will not save you when you're losing, and it does nothing if you're, if you're equal or you're ahead in the game. That is the definition of a card you don't want to be playing. 
I'm going to put this as a three. It is a the worst of the worst filler cards. I would play Eager First Year before I play Expel. So, you can play it. Be aware if you are playing it, your deck needs to either only be able to win by attacking in the air, right? So your plan is to expel your opponent's ground creatures while you kill them in the air with like like a two, three, like your combat professors in the air, right? It's even more embarrassing that combat professor is also in the color white, which gives the creatures that are attacking vigilance, which makes them immune to expel, right? That's just one example of how bad expel can be, right? So, yeah. Don't don't even don't even worry about it. Don't do it. All right, this is our first learn card. One cost sorcery, put a counter on entire creature, learn. Okay. I like this. I like this. So learn is you may, you may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand or discard or 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 discard a card to draw a card. Now that in in magic terms that ability is called rummage because there is a card called rummaging goblin da 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 discard a card draw a card right so that sort of ability is called rummaging when you looting 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 we call it looting if you draw the card first and then discard a card that's called looting because a merfolk looter if you're discarding your card and then drawing, that's called rummaging. Rummaging, in general, outside of dredge, is worse than looting, right? So that's why we, we separate those effects. So, guiding voice, learn, put a counter on a creature. Um, you can kind of think of you can kind of think of this as. You can kind of think of this as putting an additional effect on the common lessons, to give you an example. For instance, six mana, four, four, come into play, put a counter on a creature. That's a pretty reasonable card, right? Four mana, two, one flyer, put a counter on a creature. That's a reasonable card. Like a four mana three two flyer in other formats is a reasonable card. So that's like a, it's called a snapping drake. Four mana three two flyer. That's a reasonable card. So especially when it comes to these, or like make a two two and a one one that when they die you gain one life, right? For for four mana. I mean that's still not good, but it's like it's approaching playability. Four mana three two put a counter on something. That's a good card. You would actually play that. So looking at just the common summoning cards, if you have a summoning card, then Guiding Voice is kind of, I'm kind of on board with it. And you're right. You're right. It does trigger Magecraft twice if you find a summoning card, which is totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. Um, I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put this as a six. I think I'm going to put this as a six. Now, this can be dangerous. Because this card only has one target, this is dangerous. This is dangerous because if your opponent has an instant speed removal spell, they can kill your creature in response, and then you don't get to learn. Right? So, it's somewhat dangerous. Yeah. It's somewhat dangerous. So maybe, maybe I put it as a five. Let's put this as a five. This is high, I think this is high level, I think this is actually high level learning. This is the first learning card we've seen. This is the first, uh, this is the, yeah, you can target your opponent's creature to, to, uh, to defend the campus, yeah, you can. 
But yeah, this is the first one we've seen. So this is our anchor. I'll put it as a five for now. Maybe if all the other cards are worse than this, maybe we'll bump this up to a six. I like it so, but reasonable. A reasonable 21st card. Can't go wrong there. Pilgrim of the Ages. When it enters the battlefield, so you may search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Return Pilgrim of the Ages from your graveyard to your hand for six mana. I like it. I like it. So historically, there have been cards called civic, like Civic Wayfinders. So Civic Wayfinder in the past, this fellow. Like three mana, two, two, enters a battlefield, search your library for any basic land card and put it into your hand, right? Those have historically been like eight, eight out of 10, seven or eight out of 10s in, in, in previous formats. Now, obviously this is worse. It's a two, one, not a two, two. It can only find basic planes, but, but it has the like, the six mana return to your hand, which will probably happen maybe one out of six games, one out of seven games, one out of eight games. It's not going to happen very often that you're going to use the ability to have it, have it like actually affect the outcome of the game. But yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Uh, I can see it. I think you're probably almost always going to be main decking this card if you have it. I think it's probably going to be a six. I, I find it pretty unlikely that you're not going to play this card if you're playing the color white. It's at least a six. I'm going to, I might go back and reevaluate this to higher depending on like the quality of, of three drops because in call time, for example, which is the previous set, there were a ton of three twos for three, a ton of them. And so this would have been a seven, at least in the previous format, maybe a 7.5 or an eight in the previous format, because there were actually a ton of cards that it traded with that you're put for three mana. But we don't know if that's the case in this format. So would you ever cut this? Well, if you look at my, if, my rating key in the bottom right, six to nine is a main deck card, right? So by, by marking it as a six, it's a card, it's like, you're probably almost always gonna play this unless you, unless you don't have enough, unless you don't have to play any filler cards, right? Uh, yeah, Cybertron 2, I'm not sure if, it, if you say graveyard stuff, we haven't seen any of those yet. So I, I can't give you an evaluation on those yet. Okay, Pillar Drop Rescuer, five mana, two, two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard. Oh, I thought I put it into play to your hand. To your hand. This is filler for sure. It only hits creatures, doesn't hit like non-land permanents. This is filler for sure. It is. Yes, it's white card advantage. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know. This is pretty bottom of the barrel though. I mean, maybe I'm just spoiled with what every other card, every other color has access to when it comes to having two for ones, but Basically, Muldritter, this is not. All right. Uh, this is probably a four. So it's this filler. You can play it as your 23rd card, and not, and it's like, it's fine. It's fine. But it's it's not a card you're like, okay, this is like auto in, right? So. Star Pupil enters the battlefield with a plus and plus one counter on it. When it dies, put it count its counters on target creature you control. Wow, Arcbound Worker? Is that you? Is that you? Now, due to a myriad of factors, this this is a constructed magic card, by the way. 
Now, modular can only affect artifact creatures, and star pupil can hit any creature. But in general, I never played Arcbound Worker in, in Sealed. This is not constructed, this is Sealed. I never played Arcbound Worker in Sealed. And I'm pretty unlikely to play this. It's not Doom Traveler, which was a 1-1 one, one that went to die and make a 1-1 one, one, uh, flyer. This is much worse than that. It does, yes, yes, it puts all of its counters. I know, I know. I get it. It combos with the lesson. I know. I get it. I get it. I truly get it. I understand. Still a three. <laughs> proliferate is in the set. Yep. I forgot Proliferate is in fact in the set. It is a mystical archive card. That actually... All right. You can, it's not embarrassing to play Star People if you've got the things that it works with, all right? Cybertron 2, come on, my friend. I've got sealed set review in the top left and the bottom left and the bottom right twice. And you're like, but I'm talking about draft. We're not talking about draft. Get with me. All right, we're talking about sealed. One and a white, one, two flyer. Exile a card from your graveyard. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. No, thank you. That's a no for me, dog. That's a one. That's a one or a two. I'm gonna say that's a two. Storm Crow has evolved. He has died and come back with a vengeance. He wants to show the other other people his the, the method of flying, but you want to make it a one? It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's probably a one. You're right. If it cost one, I it would actually be a three or a four card. If it cost one. At two mana, that's a lot to pay for a 1-2 flyer. Tap up to two target creatures. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. There has been a card similar to this in the past. It was called Expose Evil. It was... Tap up to two target creatures, investigate, which made a clue, which was two mana sack draw card. All right? And you did not, you generally did not play Expose Evil. You generally did not play it in Sealed. So I think it's, a, it is a learn card. So it has a much higher floor. Because you draw the card immediately, maybe, instead of drawing a random card, you just draw the card immediately. Right? And you might you might be able to draw something that like a you might be able to draw like a five minute four four or a three minute two one flyer or what have you, right? So it has a higher floor. So it's at least a three. Uh I think it's pretty I think it's worse than guiding voice. I think you're correct. So it's certainly worse than a five. It's not a two. It's not a two because you. I, I. It's totally a filler card. You can play this, and it's not a. It's not a problem. I mean, like not as long as you don't play two. As long as you don't play two or three of these, you're fine. Yes, yes. You can do study break and then expel your opponent's creature for deigning to look at their books before a test. Yes, yes, yes. Kind of a flavor fail, but. Oh no, they're taking a break for studying. That's right. For deigning to take a break from studying, you expel them. Their their head must be in the book 24-7. I get that. Okay, I like that. Never mind. Not a flavor fail. Clever Lumimancer. Whenever you cast an, or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus two, plus two. Um... 
I would probably not play this card. I'm going to say this is probably... This is probably... Yeah, we're getting to the uncommons now. This is not a good sealed card. I would put this as probably a 2. Probably a 1. Um, a card... A good thing to think about is a similar card in the past. Step links. So step links was one cost zero one whenever you landfall make up you know, whenever you play and land get plus two plus two. Also monastery Swiss spear right. So monastery Swiss spear, which was you know haste a one two with prowess. So whenever if you cast a non creature spell, it becomes a two three, which is what the same thing as this card does. Um, oops. Clever Lumenmancer. It's the same thing as this card does. Um, both those cards were quite bad in Sealed. So I don't expect that you would not play them. Enchant, non land permanent. Enchanted permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. Three, destroy detention vortex. Only your opponents. Oh, this card is bad. Yeah, no. You know. That's a one. No, it says non-land permanent. Yeah, this is... This is yikes. I don't even know what... I don't know what... This, this is a skill tester card. Yeah, that's a yikes. You know what this is? This is... This is... I'll tell you what this is. There we go. Found it. A chain of creature can't be blocked unless if any player pays three for each creature there does block. It's like it reminds me of awesome presence. And yeah, that card is not not so good. <laughs> not so good. I mean, I can imagine I can imagine this detention vorex X being okay in like a certain type of draft deck maybe like you go you curve out one two three and you're and you're on the draw and your opponent plays a four drop and you detention four tox to four drop and attack with your three got creatures and like your creatures are like clever lumenmancer and eager first year right maybe but that doesn't happen in sealed so Oh, what was it? Oppressive rays? It was literally oppressive rays in the past. Oh yeah, you're right. Can't attack or block unless they pay three, and they cost three more to activate. Except this card destroys itself instead of staying in play. And oppressive rays was was a one out of ten, and this card is just way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. No, it can only be activated as a sorcery, so it does give you one turn. Even if your opponent has three mana open, but... I can't believe that's an uncommon. Uh, when near the battlefield, put a counter on target creature. Five mana, put a counter on each creature you control with a counter on it. This was a card in the past, wasn't it? Was it wasn't this a two mana one two? Wasn't this a two mana one two? Anybody remember what the name of that card was? Was it a veteran? Veteran armorer? The tempered veteran. Put a counter on target creature with a counter on it. Okay, no, this is slightly different. And then put a counter on target creature. It's a slightly different. It's much more likely, it's much more like the Mentors in previous sets. Like Keen Sight Mentor. Because it put a counter on all your creatures with Vigilance, which is similar to this one. Um, but yeah. I don't know. 
So is this card a six? It can target itself. It can target itself. So it's a four minute three three, which is kind of medium minus, but that's a floor. I'll put it as a five. I'm, I can't be that. It's either a five or a six, right? Yeah, I think it's a solid 21st card, which is what a five would be when I when I say something is a five and it's a filler, it's a solid 21st card, right? When Professor of Symbology enters the battlefield, learn. Great card. Two mana, two one, learn. Yeah. Great card. Yeah. This is like a solid what? Solid seven or eight, right? Probably an eight. It's the best learn card so far. Um, he's a seven. It is certainly worse than Combat Professor, right? It's certainly worse than this. So I'll, I'll make it a 7. You're right. A 7 is still good. You always play it. Right? 6 to 9 on my seal rating key shows that it's 6 to 9 cards you just always play. Right? If you're if you're in this color, you always play it. But the granularity in the in the in the rating system provides us a like if we're trying to say what the power level of this card is compared to other things, it's certainly a 7. I mean, you're right that if you have this lesson, right? If you have Inkling Summoning, it's, it, it, it certainly it might be an 8. Right? It might be an 8 if you have Inkling Summoning. We'll call it a 7, but just because it's still a main deck card. 7 is good. Don't get me wrong. 7 is good. It doesn't have to be. You can be good and not great. All right, this is a one. <laughs> you and target opponent each draw three cards. That's secret rendezvous. That's a pass for me. I like that the card exists. All right, I like that the card exists. But if you wanna, if you wanna make this uh, an example of, you wanna, make, you wanna make this effect good. Here's the card that it should have been, right? This is the card it should have been, which was Trade Secrets. Target opponent draws two cards, and then you draw up to four cards. Your opponent can repeat this process as many times as they choose. Trade Secrets was a card that was played, right? It's the same type of effect. Your, your opponent was unlikely to ever do this because you were drawing four cards for every two. So it's basically three mana, your opponent draws two, you draw four, right? If you wanted to make a card that was good and constructed and limited. That's trade seekers is how you do it. It's like a rendezvous, not so much. That's a pass. Alright. When you cast this spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. It's like nerf storm, right? It's storm, but it only target it only it only looks at instants and sorceries and only yours, not your opponents. But a counter on target creature, it gains vigilance, yeah. Storm minus, yeah. And no. Like, what are you gonna what are you thinking? You play two instants and sorceries, and then you play show of confidence. So you get three? Where you, how does that even happen? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, hold on, hold the phone. All the Magecraft cards copy off, copy, work off copies. Okay, wait a minute. So, if I play, like, if on five mana I play Inkling Summoning, and then I play Show of Confidence, I would have played, th that's three instant and sorcery triggers. And I get two counters. That doesn't seem like a sealed card. That seems like a... That seems like a constructed card or like a draft card, right? It's not a sealed card. 
All right, now the the fact that it triggers Magecraft is, is something I did not fully grasp at first blush. Um, yeah, that'll not happen in seal. I'm gonna put it as a two. I'm gonna put it as a two. It's not a one. We'll give it a two. It's not like it's not. It's better than. It's better than detention vortex, right? And that's a clear one. That's a clear one. And it's, it's better than Secret Rendezvous, which is also a clear one. So it's at least a two. So. I will reserve judgment on, on Show of Confidence. I will reserve judgment. It also does counters if there's a counter sub theme, right? Because they have a star pupil as well, right? They have this fellow. Look, there's a chance show of competence is a three. There's a chance it is, but it's most likely a two. All right. You think it's a three? It might be a three. It might be a three. It's at least a two though. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a counter on Stonebinders Familiar. Wow. Only once per turn. Um, does White even have a card that does that? Okay, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so first of all, okay, first of all, it only works on your turn, but it doesn't say your exile. It doesn't say your exile. It just says exile. So if your opponent's cards get exiled on your turn, you do get a counter. Or if your opponent plays a card that exiles one of their cards or your cards on your turn, this gets a counter. Oh, Source to Plowshares is a Mystical Archive card. You're right. That's a lot of hoops. I'm going to put this as at least a three. It's at least a three. It's a filler card. I mean, we haven't, we haven't seen things at Exile yet, right? Other than Expel. So... Oh, the, the two mana one two flyer? Like, whatever, dude. We're not gonna we're not doing that. The bad bird. The storm crow. The storm crow? Yeah. Okay, no. Yes, I understand that there is there may be a theme that we have not seen yet that exiles cards. However, we have I can only evaluate a card on what I've seen, and I have not seen anything yet. So all right, whenever Thunderous or Raider attacks, it gains flying until the turn if you control a creature with flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, and Trample. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Wasn't this a rare? Oh, no, it granted to all your creatures, didn't it? The Sovereign? Wasn't there a sovereign that had this text box? There was Aud no Audric granted it to all your creatures, right? Wasn't there a four and a green three three that had this text box? Yeah, from our devastation, right? Do you remember what it was called? I thought it was a sovereign, but I guess not. Was it Majestic? Yeah, Majestic Minarch. You're right. Good call. Good memory. Yeah. Yeah, it was a 5 mana star star with power notice equal to twice the number of creatures you control. And at the beginning of each combat, it gained whatever your other creatures had. And this card was fine. This, I think Thunderous Raider is better. 
Yeah, I think this card's better. I, I think the Nurse Raider's better, right? I mean, yeah, the, 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 the Minor Arc works on defense, is what you're saying. Yeah, because this works at the beginning of each combat, but come on, it's white. It's cheaper. For three mana less, I'll take the ability, right? So at least it's at least a seven. Maybe it's a six, but I mean it is kind of contingent on your on you actually having a text box in your deck, right? Well, you wouldn't if it was a two-two vigilance for two. If that was the only text, you wouldn't play it. It would be like a it would be a four. So it's contingent on you actually having. Now the plus side of this card. So the no 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 no. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's when it's whenever it attacks. So if your opponent kills your flyer in response to the triggered ability, it won't gain flying, right? You're right. That could be bad. That could be bad. I'll put it as a six. Put it as a six. That could be bad. Yeah, it has an if. It gains flying until under turn if you control a creature with flying. So, like, it only triggers if you have one and it checks on resolution, as far as I understand. So, white is looking kind of medium minus. White, I saw no good removal spell in white, right? Expel is not a thing. This is not good. And the best card was Combat Professor. As far as cards in white that are rated six or greater, we have Thunderous or Raider, Professor of Symbology, which are both uncommons. At common, we have Pilgrim of the Ages and Comet Professor, which is means white is not looking good. Not looking good. I would splash for Combat Professor. I that's I think that's totally reasonable. I think it's totally reasonable. This might be a five, but there's no way this is a six, right? There's just no way. Like, this might be a five, but there's no way this is a six. Splash for a 3-3 Flying Vigilance. Uh, this is way better than a 3-3 Flying Vigilance. This is way better. You splashed in... in um. In Ixalan, in Ixalan, you splash for the, 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 what was it? The, was it a two five flyer vigilance? You splash for that. And I think this card is comparable. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three flying vigilance is the floor. And that is a super high floor. This is way better than that. So white, white is not looking good. We'll look at other colors and see what they have to offer, but white, not impressed. 